So this is a continuation of the parenting lecture from this past Tuesday. Um, Dr. Helms said she basically got through um, talking about what each of these parenting styles involved. Um, and so what I'll start off with is, I guess, what the children of each of these um, types of parents looks like. So children of permissive parents learn little self-control and they may be immature and aggressive or may behave irresponsibly. And this can include things like using drugs and alcohol or breaking the law. Um, and these could be bids for attention as well. These children tend to have low self-esteem and delayed emotional development which can impede their ability to handle frustration. Um, if you look at the children of uninvolved or indifferent parents, these children actually fare the worst out of these four parenting styles. Um, So they actually tend to be less competent than the other three parenting styles and the children in this group are most likely to be delinquent and to experiment with drugs, alcohol, and smoking. Um, the children of authoritarian parents um, may lack spontaneity, curiosity, and creativity. Um, and authoritarian parenting also may produce children who have limited independence and assertiveness. So these children don't really know how to decide for themselves because um, from growing up their parents have made all these decisions for them. Um, these children may not be sure how to behave and depend instead on others for their sense of control. And they may have low self-esteem and be aggressive and defiant. And then when we look at children of the authoritative or democratic parenting style, um, this tends to be the most adaptive parenting style for children. Um, so the children of these parents are generally responsible, independent, have higher self-esteem and confidence, and are better able to control their aggression. They're often described as more psychosocially competent, um, creative, curious, socially skilled, have better school achievement. Um, but again, you know, these are kind of general descriptions of children raised in these parenting styles, and there's definitely variation you know, within the parenting style. What that means is it's possible for example, children who are raised with authoritative and democratic parents to, you know, engage in delinquent behaviors. And it's possible for children with permissive parents to be psychosocially competent and control their behavior. These are just kind of general or like average descriptions. There are several um, critiques and exceptions to these parenting styles. So again, like previously, the authoritative parenting style was kind of held up on this pedestal like the best way to raise children. Um, but it's not the only successful way to raise children. Um, so many children raised in, in homes with other parenting styles become caring, cooperative adults, like I mentioned before. And there are actually a few specific areas of criticism to these, um, to explain these exceptions. The first is child temperament. So child outcomes may be due to the child's unique temperament or personality 
and how they react to the parent's efforts rather than due to the parenting style. So parents of mature children may have developed the authoritative style because of the child's behavior and not vice versa. Or potentially on the other hand, parents of temperamentally difficult children may feel constrained to resort to authoritarian child rearing techniques because they view that as their only option. Um, so likely what's happening here is a bi-directional relationship, which means that um, child temperament and parenting outcomes probably affect, or parenting strategies affect each other. Child expectations is another exception or critique of this, of the parenting styles. Um, so cultural research has shown that child's expectations of how parents should behave also play an important role. So research on families in Korea and China have suggested that children expect strong parental control and interpret it as a sign of love and deep concern. The degree of rejection is also important. So the presence of parental rejection, including neglect and indifference, appears to pre produce the most detrimental child outcomes above those associated with responsiveness or demandingness. So again, this um, would be, you know, just not really caring for a child and being indifferent to his or her presence. There are also some gender and race or ethnic critiques of these parenting styles. So when we think about gender, um, there's differences between um, boys and girls. The effects of absence of support is actually worse for girls while the absence of control or demandingness seems to be more negative for boys. So what this means is, for if you think about those parenting styles, authoritarian and the uninvolved parenting styles are low on warmth. So, the, so those might be very hard for a girl to be raised in that environment, whereas for boys, a permissive, or uninvolved parenting style might be less adaptive. So there are also, again, like I said, some race and ethnic differences. So these parenting styles have been examined in large studies, including with Hispanics, African Americans, Asians, and Caucasians. The findings reveal that although authoritative parenting is more common in Caucasian families, it also has a positive impact on minority youth. Authoritarian parenting, and so that again was one with low responsiveness or warmth and support and higher um, control and demandingness. So authoritarian parenting was more common among ethnic minorities and the negative impacts on children are not as commonly seen in these families as they are in white families. So we mentioned before that demand and control are interpreted as love and caring in some Asian cultures. And this may also be the case among some ethnic minority families. This may especially be the case since ethnic minority families are more heavily represented in urban low-income communities where this style of parenting actually may be adaptive and necessary in order to keep children safe. There are also some studies I looked up um, <clears throat> to share with you guys. So one of the studies uh, that examined preschool children and these parenting styles actually found that for African-American families, girls raised with an authoritarian parenting style were actually the most self-assertive and independent. And so again, this speaks to what I mentioned earlier about how sometimes this high control and demandingness can actually be interpreted 
as deep love and concern from parents. So there are some differences in parenting between mothers and fathers. Those differences typically revolve around the type and level of involvement. So in general, positive father involvement has been found to enhance development in children, um, and specifically in preschoolers and school-age children. Um, so benefits found include children's increased cognitive competence, empathy, and internal locus of control. And another study found that father involvement was linked with children's self-esteem, life skills, and social competence, and self-control. Um, so again, it, it's the research tends to show that you know, there are positive outcomes from children who have high involvement from their fathers. Another study um, actually found that high positive engagement by fathers was also associated with fewer externalizing and internalizing behavior problems among their children. So in general, there's, you know, a, consist a consensus in the field that positive father involvement is, you know, quite adaptive and beneficial for children. So when we think of the level of, of involvement, fathers tend to be less involved than mothers overall. There has been an increase in recent years, though, particularly in dual earner families. Um, and so, research has shown that when a mother or wife has, works more, the father does tend to be more involved in childcare. And if we think about this um, for, in a global context as well, there's currently no known society in which women do not do the majority of childcare in their families. Um, and so in the United States, when we think about this, there are some families where the primary caregiver may be the father, but that's not a typical pattern for our society. Type of involvement. So fathers also spend much more of their time playing with children as opposed to providing basic care. And so with babies, this, may, this sort of involvement may specialize in play that involves lots of movement. Um, there's something in the field that's kind of been called rough and tumble play, which research has shown that fathers tend to engage in this more with their children than mothers do. So with preschool and school-aged children, Fathers tend to spend more time in outdoor and recreational play. Um, and so fathers are more tactile and physical, um, whereas others are more verbal and toy mediated. But again, it's more in this like leisure time with children than the basic care tasks. Um, and this holds true for when children move into adolescence as well. So when fathers have adolescent children, they're more involved with leisure activities than chores with their children. So there's also some variation in father involvement. Um, so residential status, basically, this is sort of intuitive, but fathers who live with their children so who are residential, um, tend to spend more time and um, are involved more with their children as opposed to fathers who are not residing with their children. And this is just an average again. So there are some fathers who don't fit this mold. However, it's just easier to be more involved with children who you live with.
There are also some ethnic or racial differences in father involvement. And so there was a federal survey that kind of looked at how much time fathers spent in different types of tasks and how much time they spent involved in their children, with their children. Um, and there's some negative stereotypes about African American fathers, um, particularly because African American fathers are less likely to be co-residential with their children. But this study didn't find any evidence of African American fathers being less involved with their children. It actually found the opposite where black dads tended to be involved with their children more than either white or Hispanic fathers. So for example, among fathers who lived with young children, 70% of African American fathers said they bathed, diapered, or dressed those children every day, compared with 60% of white fathers and 45% of Latino fathers. This study also looked at fathers living apart from their children, and the f findings showed that African American fathers were at least as involved as other dads not living with their children, and in some cases more so. So according to these studies, um, more than half of African American fathers said that several times a week or more they talked to their children about their day. And again, this was a higher percentage than among white or Latino fathers living separately from their older children. And so these are just a couple examples from this report, but if you're interested, I will post it under the related resources section. Um, and it did find quite a few similarities between these different ethnicities in terms of father involvement. But again, there were some differences, and so it's just important to know what the research says. So getting fathers involved. So again, what factors come into play to help fathers get involved with their children? Um, parenting skills. So there are programs that are designed to increase fathers' skills and competence in child rearing. And these programs and the skills that fathers developed are actually linked with higher involvement. So studies suggest that fathers who feel more skilled at parenting are more likely to be involved. Maternal gatekeeping, which is restricting father involvement by constant criticizing or taking over themselves. So maternal gatekeeping behaviors, as well as attitudes, have been associated with decreased father involvement with children. And this is applicable from, with children ranging from two to 19 years old. In addition, um, gatekeeping behaviors and attitudes are influenced by maternal perceptions of father's parenting competence. So mothers actually increased their gatekeeping when they perceived that fathers were um, had less parenting competence. Marital conflict is another thing. Um, marital conflict has actually been shown to increase mother's gatekeeping behaviors. And so one of the studies that specifically looked at this found that marital conflict did increase maternal gatekeeping. Um, and this actually, again, predicted decreased amounts of father-child involvement and interaction. And this led to adolescents, which were the study sample, but adolescents actually perceived that they mattered less to their fathers because of that. So less, again, maternal gatekeeping would improve father involvement. Marriage um, is another factor that influences father involvement in parenting. 
So in happier marriages, mothers are more likely to encourage father involvement, provide information, and pass on parenting skills, which improves parents' um, father's involvement. And again, marital conflict influences father involvement um, with outside of gatekeeping as well. So marital conflict can actually undermine the quality of fathering. And this can be evidenced by things like increased negative father-child interactions, increased paternal control, um, decreased parental paternal warmth and monitoring. And so when we think about the quality of interactions, having high marital conflict can actually make interactions between fathers and their children more negative. And marital conflict also erodes the quantity of interactions between fathers and their children. So when there's high levels of marital conflict in a relationship, Fathers are more likely than mothers to actually withdraw and disengage from their children. There are also some family characteristics that influence father involvement. So the sex of the child comes into play. Fathers tend to be more involved with um, boys than girls. Um, and there actually aren't differences for mothers based on the sex of the child. But again, this is not really something you can control, so. The number of siblings in the family. So more siblings means more involvement by fathers. And the age of the child also influences father involvement. So Fathers are actually more involved with younger children than with older children. Maternal employment is another factor affecting father involvement. So in single earner families, fathers get involved when they feel more skilled and when they are deeply in love with their wives. And in dual earner families, father's involvement is not necessarily related to skill. So fathers often get involved whether or not they feel they are good at parenting. Um, really because it's a necessity when both partners are working. And, you know, again, when wives work more hours and are working more frequently, fathers also tend to step up their level of involvement with children. Remarriage also affects father involvement. So um, fathers who become involved in a second marriage, they tend to reflect on the mistakes that they made in their first marriage and express a strong desire to be a more committed and involved parent in that second marriage. Family-friendly workplace policies can also affect father involvement. So research has shown that some fathers complain about how low wages or mandatory overtime limit the amount of time they can spend with their children. Um, and fathers who actually work less hours and have more flexible schedules tend to do more childcare. Um, and this paradigm um, for work is actually quite different in other industrialized or European countries. So, for example, in Denmark, a parent, a father specifically, can take up to a whole year off to care for a sick child. And they would still receive two-thirds wage replacement. And other Nordic countries, so like Norway, for example, these countries actually encourage the use of paid paternal leave. Um, and so it's interesting that we, as the United States, just have not very good policies for fathers in the workplace. And even for mothers, especially, like maternity leave in the United States is much lower and 
not as good as like in other countries. Like I feel like some other countries, one of my colleagues was telling me that in Brazil they get um, four months off for maternity leave and they're paid for those four months. But so what we can say about this is that, you know, having family friendly work policies can actually improve father involvement. I'm going to stop this one here. Um, there's still a little bit left from the parenting lecture and I'll pick that up in the next part.